Today we are going to discuss pathophysiology of pneumonia. So when it comes to pneumonia, remember pneumonia has got only one line definition when you write in the exam. It's an infection of pulmonary parenchyma. It's an infection of pulmonary parenchyma. So now comes to pneumonia. Remember that when you have to write in the exam, you have to write in a proper organized way. So regarding the pathophysiology of pneumonia, first when you mention the pathophysiology of pneumonia, first you have to mention the defense mechanism of the lung. Once you, you mention defense mechanism. So what are the defense mechanisms that the organism have to reach here? It has to overcome all the defense mechanism so that it can reach here and cause pneumonia. So what are the defense mechanisms you have to mention? So we'll start from the nose. So different the nasal hairs and turbinates. Nasal hairs and turbinates, there's the mechanical factors. Nasal hairs and turbinates, then we'll start with there here ciliary, there here cilia. So any bacteria that has to come either it through aspiration or it is uh, by inhalation, it has to overcome these factors. So this ciliary, mucociliary clearance, mucociliary clearance is also a big factor that obstructs the bacteria to go to here. And then our all the protective reflexes, you have to mention the names like gag reflex, cough reflex, then also the normal bacterial flora is here, normal bacterial flora. And what else, the last, the most important is the resident pulmonary alveolar macrophages. Okay, or resident alveolar macrophages. Resident alveolar macrophage. So any bacteria that has to reach here, it has to overcome all these mechanical factors. Then this mucociliary protection. Then it has to overcome also the macrophages. Then only it can cause the inflammation here. And remember, pneumonia is not only because of the bacterial infection. It has. It is also because of the host response. So we can say this is because of bacterial infection. Yes, and also host response. Because once the bacteria is here, what happens? It releases lots of endotoxins. So we'll go to the pathophysiology. So when you write pathophysiology, first you have to write number one all the defense mechanisms. Okay, so after mentioning the defense mechanism that bacteria, any bacteria that is going inside, it has, it has to overcome all these one, two, three, four, five, six factors. It has to overcome the six factors, then the bacteria will be lodged here because it is an infection of lung parenchyma. So we're talking about all this interstitial space and this alveolar, which is mainly inflamed in pneumonia. Now we are going to discuss the pathophysiology, the proper pathophysiology. So next, what will you write in the after defense mechanism? So after the defense mechanism, there are four factors that you have to mention in the exam. You should write in the exam. Okay. What are these four factors? First thing, there will be alveolar capillary leakage. Okay. Okay. Wait. So first thing that happens is alveolar capillary leakage, which you have to mention in the exam. Alveolar capillary leakage means this endothelium means what happens? This endothelium here, the endothelium there's increased permeability in this endothelium. So as a result, fluid escapes. Fluid escapes. So fluid escapes here. Now, how this alveolar capillary leakage that takes place? Okay, what happens when there is a bacteria? It will release endotoxins. It will release endotoxins. So when there is an endotoxin, endotoxins and a bacteria, then what will happen? This macrophage will all release all the inflammatory markers like cytokines and interleukins. Okay, 
So it will release what? It will release cytokines, it will release interleukins. So because of the cytokine and also tumor necrosis factor. So together they are causing what? They are causing pyrexia, they are causing fever. And this interleukins and tumor necrosis factor, what is happening here? They are also doing as chemotaxis. Chemotaxis. Now these endotoxins on the other hand, what they are doing, these endotoxins, they are damaging this epithelium. They are damaging this endothelium because when in pneumonia, what is happening here, the fluid has to go here. So the fluid has to enter the alveolus. To enter the alveolus, fluid, to reach the alveolus, it needs at least two things. First thing is that the capillary endothelial gap should be increased so that fluids can migrate, it can pass through. And second is alveolar, the second hurdle for fluid to reach here is the alveolar, capillary, alveolar epithelial membrane, which also should be destroyed. So that is done by the endotoxins. So once these endotoxins are doing the part and this, there is also chemotaxis, so a whole lot of these granulocytes, they migrate here. Now what is happening here? There are lots and lots of white blood cells, granulocytes. So a series of inflammation process started along with release of prostaglandins, leukotrienes, so it's a whole bunch of inflammatory markers are released here and what is happening here? It's a going a big host inflammatory response. So because of the liberation of endotoxin, the host is responding with release of inflammatory markers and that is causing all sort of pyrexia and other factors, chemotaxis and increased vascular permeability and overall what is happening here? Alveolar capillary leakage. As a result, what is happening? As a result, there is fluid collected here. So fluid collection. So this you have to start with the pathophysiology, you have to write alveolar capillary leakage. Now this whole thing that I am mentioning, this is not my own view. I am done a whole research uh, in from and this whole reference is goes to Harrison's internal medicine and also Robin's pathophysiology. Robin's textbook of pathophysiology. So this alveolar capillary leakage after the alveolar capillary le leakage, next you have to mention in the exam when you write, you write in the organized way, so alveolar capillary leakage and then erythrocytes migration, which is also very important. Erythrocytes migrations. So this erythrocytes migration is specially mentioned in Harrison's internal medicine. So along with the fluid, now what is happening here, the plenty of erythrocytes are coming to the plate. So these erythrocytes here in this alveoli along with the fluid that explains for hemoptysis in pneumonia. So because of that there is hemoptysis in pneumonia. Now the third pathophysiology that you must mention and it is very well explained in Harrison's internal medicine is interference with interference with interference with hypoxic vasoconstriction hypoxemic vasoconstriction hypoxemic vasoconstriction now you all know from the basic pathology that whenever the gas exchange no don't take place whenever the oxygen is not able to reach to the capillaries as per the normal routine, then what will happen? There is a situation of hypoxia because oxygen is or the gas exchange is not taking place. So whenever this situation arises, usually, normally, there is vasoconstriction. The surrounding capillaries, they go for vasoconstriction. So this vasoconstriction is to save that, save that amount of blood which is not taking part in gas exchange. And so this blood will be then diverted towards healthy capillaries. So instead of coming this side, then most of the blood will go through the healthy capillaries where there is no collection of fluid or where gas exchange is taking place. Okay. So this is a normal process. Whenever there are gas exchange don't take place, there is a process called hypoxemic vasoconstriction. So it is well mentioned in Harrison, there is an interference with hypoxemic vasoconstriction because of this release of endotoxins. So that's why this bacteria in bacteria or virus in the pneumonia results this 
only because when they interference with this third factor that is hypoxemic vasoconstriction so as a result in pneumonia this hypoxemic vasoconstriction is not taking place so there is no vasoconstriction of this surrounding capillaries on the affected alveoli so as a result what will happen the blood is still carrying carbon dioxide and no oxygen is coming so this carbon dioxide is increasing in the level in the blood level and it's also causing a situation of hypoxemia hypoxemia and plus increased carbon dioxide so this increased carbon dioxide level in the body it is responsible for increased respiratory drive which is a basic thing in pneumonia so if you don't mention increased respiratory drive in pneumonia you are not going to get good marks so interference with hypo hypoxemic vasoconstriction resulting in increased respiratory drive that's why in every pneumonic patient or pneumonia patient there is increased respiratory rate or you could or you call it as a tachypnea which is a very important feature of pneumonia so alveolar capillary leakage then erythrocytes migration interference with hypoxemic vasoconstriction which resulting in increased respiratory rate and you know this how it happens and then number 4 is okay the so this interference and over and number 4 we have to write in overall okay so number 4 i mention it i just mention here so number 4 you mention as overall so overall what is happening here together now okay we we'll summarizing it so because of number 1 number 2 number 3 along with increased respiratory drive what's happening here there is decreased compliance so because of this decreased compliance because there is fluid all over here fluid all over here fluid over here so the compliance is with this it's not getting enough space to increase the size size of the alveolar during inspiration so there is decreased compliance there is this hypoxemia because not able to do the gas exchange then we know increased respiratory drive then increased secretions increased secretions and increased bronchospasm so because of this number 1 2 and 3 there is and also number 4 you can say so there is in decreased compliance increased hypoxemia increased respiratory drive increased secretions increased bronchospasm together they what is what is they doing they are doing this near they are doing this near so this is about pathophysiology of pneumonia so when you write pathophysiology of pneumonia you have to mention the defense mechanisms which bacteria must overcome to reach here second thing what happens here there is capillary leakage is case a situation like pulmonary edema you can say and when there is a sudden and massive then we call it a ards which that happens in coronavirus infection <clears throat> so alveolar capillary leakage then red blood cells come here resulting in hemoptysis hypoxemic vasoconstriction and number 4 you can say increase the spit it drive and that is called overall what is happening here overall it causing dyspnea and increased respiratory rate these are the hallmark to diagnose a case of pneumonia <coughs> now before we finish that because pathology is different from pathophysiology yes we have included now what will you write if after the you can finish the pathophysiology with the last heading called the pathology so so what will you mention in patho pathology here So pathology, you can write it very easily if you know this part. First thing you write. Look, first thing what happens because of alveolar capillary leakage, there is fluid collection. So you write congestion or edema. That is congestion or edema. 
So after congestion and edema, there is red blood cells here coming here, and it becomes little bit thick, like a consistency of liver. So we call it the red hepatization. So that is because of presence of erythrocytes. So this stays for one to two days. Okay. Then after another, it also stays for one to two days. So after another two days, this atrocyte starts dying and the whole thing is contained. And because of the dying atrocytes and no more new influx of atrocytes, this thing will turn grayish in color, what we call as gray hepatization. And then after a week, this is also, you can say one to three days. And then after a week, the healing will start, which we call as resolution. So this is the pathology. Okay, this is you can write under pathology. So when you mention the pathophysiology, you write this uh, defense mechanism. You write the basic pathophysiology that we have already discussed. Then in the last part, you write the pathology. And when you write in this way, you will definitely will get good marks in the exam. So this is about pathophysiology of pneumonia.